Annette Gord, Field Specialist in Food Safety with Ohio State University Extension. And we're here in Gahanna, Ohio with Melanie Forsyth. And she has a lovely home here that she's invited us in today. And I understand you have a little urban farm here. You want to talk a little bit about what you're doing here? Um, yes, um, thank you, Lynette. Thanks for coming out to uh, my house. It's really lovely. Five years ago, my husband and I bought this place and we have two acres and we really wanted to live a little bit more sustainably and uh, replace some of the things that we normally bought at the store with things that we could grow here at our home. So we started with chickens to replace eggs and that's gone fantastic. We got some goats to use for milk. That has been all right. Uh, and we have also been doing beehives. And so we were able to get our first harvest of honey this year, which is really exciting. But we would like to start canning our tomatoes so that I don't have to buy them from the store anymore. And so that is why you are here with me. Great, I understand that you put an Instagram picture on Facebook. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's how we found you. Absolutely. <laughs> and you wanted to learn a little more about what to do with these tomatoes that you picked this morning. Yes. Okay, Melanie, we're gonna start with your tomatoes that you harvested this morning. Okay. Um, we want to clean your tomatoes first, and I understand you've already done that. Yes. And the best way to clean vegetables is to wash them in clear running water. We don't need any special vegetable washes or anything like that, clear okay. water is fine. So we're going to be processing crushed tomatoes in a hot water bath canner. Okay. And <laughs> so we have boiling water. Yes and we have a bowl with ice water in it. Mm -hmm. And what we're gonna do is take your tomatoes, dip them into the hot boiling water for 30 seconds, leave them in there, and then put them into the water bath. And what that will do is that'll help us so we can slip the skins off of there. Do they just come right off? They do, and we'll see Wonderful. that. Okay? okay, so let's get started. Let me set this over here. Okay, so we're gonna take just a few of the tomatoes. Okay. Put them in our strainer. Okay. okay. Is that enough? Yeah, that's enough to get started with. And we'll just put them down in that water. And we need to leave them in there for 30 seconds. Okay. Okay, after 30 seconds, we're going to take these out of here. And we're going to put them into the ice water. Wonderful. And then this is, the, this is the part that you get your hands dirty and maybe it's a little warm, mm -hmm. but you're gonna take them out of here. Okay. And the skin slip right off. Oh. Okay, we're down to the last two. Let's get these finished and into the pot. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is take these crushed tomatoes and put them on to boil. And just cook them down a little bit so that we can um, get them in the jars. Okay, we're ready to get these tomatoes into the jars. We crushed our tomatoes, they've been boiling. It only takes about five minutes for that process. Um, and just kind of crush them down as they're, they're cooking. They create their own juice. We did not add any water to the mixture at all. It's so amazing. Okay. In the meantime, we washed our jars, hot soapy water, rinsed them well. The other thing you can do is just run them through a dishwasher cycle. That's mm -hmm. fine. Just make sure they're clean. Today we're going to use um, the citric acid. And for um, pints, you would use a fourth teaspoon per okay. pint. For quarts, you use a half teaspoon per quart. And so we're using quarts today. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. And we'll just put that in the bottom of the jar. We're going to ladle our tomatoes crushed tomatoes into the jars. Oh, that's great. Just that easy. Okay, the other, the other thing then, uh, which is a consideration, is how much head space we leave. For this particular one, it says a half inch, so that's our half inch mark. Okay. And what we wanna do 
is we want to fill it up to the bottom. See, it's just touching there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then this jar is ready to put the lid on. And what this is, um, our lids, our inner lids that we use on top of the jar, um, we put them in hot water. We want simmering water. We just want to soften that rubber seal. Okay. And we're going to um, make sure that the top of that is clean. And then we're going to put the inner lid on. This inner lid is a one-time use. So once you use that product, you know, we're going to store that product. Yeah. Once it's used, we throw this away. Okay. So I can save the jar, but not the inner lid. And you can save the ring. Okay. And the ring goes over that. That's something and I never knew either. Yeah. When you put the ring on, then you put it on just till it catches. Oh. And then you're going to turn it just fingertip tight. Okay. You don't want to crank them on. Yeah. A lot of people crank that. Um, ring on there and what it does it puts a bind between the top of this lid and the ring and those jars don't seal. Oh, you see that that's amazing because I would think you'd have to make it really tight. Yeah, so, so you're going to do the next one. Okay. And we're going to move our canner over onto the burner. And it does it's get pretty heavy. heavy. Oh, goodness me. Okay. okay. Go ahead and put it on high because we want to get that water boiling. Now is the time, too, to go ahead and fill the canner. And you want the water to be an inch above the top of the lids. Okay. Okay, Melanie, the time's up. We've processed these for 45 minutes, so go ahead and turn the heat off. Okay. We'll take the lid off. Wow. It's boiling in there. Yeah. Okay, so as soon as that calms a little bit, because you don't want to burn yourself, you know, the, the rolling boil can attack you, I guess. <laughs> So go ahead and take them out. As you're taking the jars out, make sure you pick them straight up and just place them on your towel. And you want to have a nice flat surface that you can put them on. Canned goods should be used within a year. Okay. So just put up enough that you would use for one year mm -hmm. and next year you'll process more. Wonderful. I'm, okay. I'm so excited. Okay. Well, Thank you for allowing me to come into your home and, and show you how to do this. We really appreciate it. Oh, Lynette, you have been so, just it's just been a joy to have you here. So thank you so much for taking the time to come to my house. It's, I feel ready to, to try ready to do some own. more, huh? Yes. <laughs> and there's other products that you might want to try too. And so don't forget to go find our fact sheets and, okay. and work through those. Um, it's just a good place to start. Um, you can all go to our website, which is go.osu.edu um, backslash food preservation. We also have other videos that are available for you on a variety of food related topics. You can go to youtube.com backslash OSU extension. Thanks for watching us today. <laughs>